What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another Mental Strop episode from RiversEdgeCutlery.com. Today, we're talking about the history and application of one of our favorite locking mechanisms, the compression lock. Hey, man, I've been looking at some knives, but I keep cutting my fingers off. Do you have any knives to fidget with that won't cut them? I do, and it's fidgety and safe, at least for the fingers. So the compression lock from Spyderco, especially on their paramilitary twos, basically just push that over, and that blade will close shut. No fingers in the way, no fingertips again sliced off. Huh, how about that? I'll take it. Sweet. While the compression lock has gone through many different iterations, the first compression lock was found on the gunting knife, which was designed by Bram Frank. And this first Spyderco compression lock was introduced in the year 2000. One of the peculiar things about this first compression lock was that Bram Frank, being a left-handed user, designed this knife to be a left-handed compression lock. And while those still exist in the PM2 family today, they are very, very uncommon. This initial compression lock was found in the original paramilitary family, as well as in the original Yojumbo, designed by Michael Janich. The original compression lock also had a much different detent system as opposed to the newer ball bearing detent that we're used to seeing in modern compression locks. While it is often a misconception that the compression lock is simply a liner lock on the reverse side of the knife, this couldn't be less true. While there is a lot of similarities with the actual lock bar on a liner lock as opposed to a compression lock, the locking face as well as the lock geometry can be quite different. The actual locking face on the blade tang of the knife on a liner lock faces towards the rear of the knife and under certain types of pressure such as from the top or a wrenching or twisting pressure, the tendency for a liner lock to fail comes from the, from the lock bar disengaging and actually slipping off of that lock face or since that lock is kind of long and skinny, you can see bowing in the, in the actual lock bar. However, on a compression lock knife, the locking face is perpendicular to the blade tang of the knife. The lock bar is compressed between the locking face and that stop pin. Thus, we get the term compression lock. The stop pin is actually playing double duty here. It is not only preventing the blade from over rotating, it is also adding a second point of contact for the lock bar to prevent it from bending or actually coming out of place on that perpendicular lock face there. There have been modifications to the compression lock family of locks. The Spyderco ATR took a page out of the Reeve integral lock book and made what they refer to as an integral compression lock. That being the scale, uh, essentially having a lock bar cut out of it like a frame lock, but then instead of being on the bottom like a traditional reeve integral lock, it's on the top and then locks in between that perpendicular lock face and the stop pin. Additionally, knives like the smock, which on the face look like a traditional plunge lock or button lock, are actually a button actuated compression lock, which is kind of cool. The compression lock is also quite useful because it keeps the user's fingers out of the path of the cutting edge since the whole action is on the reverse of the knife. This makes it a much easier and safer way for especially new knife users to open and close their knife one handed. You might be wondering why we don't see compression locks in a lot of different manufacturers' knives. And there's actually a very good reason for that. The compression lock has a utility patent on it, which means that it is going to be Spyderco's proprietary locking mechanism for a long time. So guys, that is a not so deep dive into the history and the utility of the Spyderco compression lock. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave them down in the comments. And if you learned something today, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really, really helps us out. Guys, this has been Evan for RiversEdgeCutlery.com. I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Mental Strop. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of My Phone's in the f shot from RiversEdgeCutlery.com.